If you're like me, you probably have several reasons for your interest in genetic genealogy and paper trail genealogy as well. Maybe it's as simple as where did I get my eye color or as complex as I have doubts about my parentage. You might be asking yourself, was there a stranger or sadly a friend in the woodpile? Other folks are interested in genetic genealogy for uh, health reasons. They want to be able to detect if they're going to be uh, prone to diseases. That's a worthy thing to, to pursue. Now, I was also curious about the historical events and geographic settings that shaped my regional culture. That makes me wonder if there's something called genetic memory at work in us, but that's a topic for another day. You know, it's hard to discount the value of a paper trail in connecting the generations of our families, but sometimes unknown adoptions, extramarital relationships, and out of wedlock births, especially those that were covered up, can give us a false picture of our genetic history. How else could I explain the number of Y chromosome matches that I have with men surnamed Brady and Oliver? The wandering paramour in our respective family trees was most likely a van. Now, how do I know that? Well, it's because it's easy to validate the Y chromosomes in distant van cousins that share a common ancestor who lived in the middle to late 18th century. <laughs> there was apparently a lot of infidelity going along in the 1700s. The most likely candidates for our three separate lines are Cherokee Chief James Van, who was born around 1762 and died around 1809, or he died in 1809. He was a slave owner and a polygamist, but he also had several women on the string. His father Joseph was something of a wanderer too, and he served as an interpreter at the sale of Kentucky uh, to the Transylvania Company um, that took place in March 1775 in Sycamore Shoals, Tennessee. I almost forgot that. <laughs> wow. With that said, though, genetic genealogy can help us reconcile or even validate the stories told at family gatherings. It can also be used to check the accuracy of our paper trails. So today on the Vantage Point, I'm talking about the origin of major haplogroups of men, the Y chromosome. If this video is well received, I'll do one on mitochondrial DNA. It follows the female line. Today's show promises to be a good one, so I hope you'll join me. I'm going to be mentioning the origin of various haplogroups, so if you're carrying one of them, there's a good chance that your male line originated in that place before it mutated into subclades. In other words, each of the haplogroups have mutated multiple times over the centuries. One might be surprised to learn that some of these groups are connected to different geographic populations. Now, let's go in alphabetical order. Haplogroup A is the paternal haplogroup of all haplogroups. That's right, all male haplogroups descend from one man who lived in East Africa. It's still scattered, or I should say his, um, <laughs> his DNA is still scattered in places in Africa, but it seems to be most common in the Nile River Valley. That makes sense because that was part of the Fertile Crescent and the Cradle of Civilization. Haplogroup B is a primary branch of haplogroup BT. It's found mostly in North Africa and in Central African rainforest. BT is most associated with ancient out of Africa migration flows. Haplogroup C. This major haplogroup is found mostly in Asia, Oceania, and North America. So if you're wondering about where most Native Americans originated, you found an answer. Now, you might note that Oceania includes the islands and Australia in the South Pacific. Haplogroup C21BA1A, which is a subclade of haplogroup C, I should say subclade C21BA1A, is common among Algonquin and Siouan peoples. In pre-colonial times, the Algonquin lived near the Canadian-USA border in the Northeast, and the Siouan people lived in the Northern Midwest. It looks like some ancient hunter-gatherers went out looking for game, but they found something or someone else that kept them away from home. Haplogroup D is another Asian haplogroup. It's found mostly in Japan, China, and Tibet especially, and the Andaman Islands. Haplogroup E, it's found mostly in Africa and parts of the Middle East, and to a lesser extent, Europe. According to some sources, Adolf Hitler's Y chromosome was E1B1B. Interestingly, some folks claim that his paternal line was Jewish. Now, Hitler's reported haplogroup 
is thought to have entered Hitler's family when his grandmother worked as a domestic servant for a Jewish man. At any rate, Hitler's Y chromosome points to a Middle Eastern origin, but Judaism is an ethnicity centered around a religion, not necessarily genetics. Some Jews belong to E, but others belong to G or J. In Europe, there are also Jews with the RM17 chromosome. Outside of a bit of hanky-panky, it could be that Jewish women married Gentiles. Haplogroup F. This haplogroup seems to be the parent of about 90% of all non-African haplogroups. F is most common in South Asia, Southeast Asia, and parts of East Asia. These areas are the most densely populated parts of the human ecumene. Haplogroup GM201 is mostly found among various ethnic groups in the Caucasus Mountains. That's in, uh, in between, well, it's in between the Caspian and the Black Sea. It also shows up in Europe. South Asia, Central Asia, and North Africa. Haplogroup I1. In the heart of Scandinavia, some 35 to 45 percent of men carry this Y chromosome. It's also well represented in German-speaking countries as well as England and Scotland. Well, the Vikings went there. If you have this haplogroup and your paternal line came from countries outside of Scandinavia, you probably have at least one Viking ancestor, and interestingly enough, it was in the father's line, and it's all males down through the way. Haplogroup I2. Sounds like it might be up around uh, Scandinavia too, but no, not really. This branch of the I haplogroup originated in Eastern Europe in places like the former Yugoslavia and Bulgaria. The sea routes carried their male relatives to the island of Sardinia in the Mediterranean Sea, where 39% of the men carried that haplogroup. Wow. Haplogroup J. This haplogroup began in the Caucasus Mountains in the nearby Ponta Caspian uh, Sea area. It's also found in nearby Turkey and North Africa and the Middle East, including Iran. Haplogroup N1C. This rather small haplogroup originated primarily in the Baltic states. They include Latvia, Lithuania, and Estonia. It's also found in Finland and Northern Russia. Haplogroup Q. If you'd like more evidence of the genetic origins of Native Americans, look no further than Haplogroup Q. It originated in Central Asia and Siberia. Get this now. Some 90% of pre-Columbian natives carried this haplogroup. Apparently, most Native Americans descend from branch Q1A2A1, or L54. Because nomadic hunters from the steppes also traveled west, haplogroup Q shows up in Eastern Europe. That's why some people in, in Europe have Native American DNA. It's not really Native American DNA, it's actually from the steppe. Haplogroup R1A. This haplogroup is often thought to be strictly Eastern European, where it's dominant. But a strong argument for its origin is made for the lands that stretched from Northern Asia through South Central Asia. Interestingly, R1 traveled with populations into China, Pakistan, and India. This should not come as much of a surprise because languages spoken in northern India, Pakistan, and Iran share Indo-European roots with English and other European languages. Haplogroup R1b. We've made it to my own haplogroup. It's the largest Y-chromosome haplogroup in Western Europe. R1b is found from Western Europe with decreasing density to Asia where it originated. When it comes to genetic genealogy from Europe, we must look more at the subclades. R1b1 L21 is associated with the Celtic populations of Ireland, Scotland, Wales, England, and uh, the coastal areas of Western Europe. I'm an L21 person myself. S21 U106 is called the Germanic branch, while D20, DF27 is labeled a Gallo-Iberian subclade. S28 U152 is labeled the Italo-Celtic wing of the haplogroup. Now, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that if your male line has been in southern Appalachia for over 150 years, or any part of Appalachia for over 100 years for that matter, I would argue that there is close to an 80% chance that your male line belongs to one of the R1B subclades. I'll go even further by saying that there's over a 60% chance that you carry R1B L21. Haplogroup T. Over 50% of haplogroup T are found in tribes in southern Somalia and Djibouti. 
Another hot spot is in Cameroon in West Central Africa. Still, it's one of the most widely dispersed paternal haplogroups in the world. Well folks, I hope this brief overview of Y chromosome haplogroups has added some to your genealogical tool bag. So if you're interested, have your DNA tested. Meanwhile, I'll wait to see if you're keen for me to do an episode on mitochondrial DNA through the mom's line. Until I see you again, may the good Lord bless and keep you. May he make his face shine on you and give you peace. Bye-bye.